I... I thought you were a different kind of cop. Sorry I had to do that to you, Tommy. Sorry about that. Hey Nuggets, welcome to the food truck. My name's Ruka, and today we are doing episode 7 of Disco Elysium. So last time, uh, we met the Hardy Boys and went through a lengthy list of questions regarding the hanging slash murder. And it seems like they're hiding something. I'm not exactly sure what it is. And also the gardener, or at least the person we who we thought was a gardener, um, is actually Elizabeth. And she's been very hostile to us last time. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I have a feeling she knows what's going on. She's trying to protect someone. I know the Hardy Boys is trying to also protect someone. The question is exactly what happened. Because nothing really adds up with their testimony. And we got to figure that out soon. That is our main goal for today. Figure out what actually happened and see where we go from there. And yeah, that's really all I got. All right, so let's get going. All right, so <sighs> kind of screwed up last time. I know that much. Let's check to see if Joyce knows anything. I know, I know that she might be involved and I know she's not going to tell us anything unless we have our badge, but maybe we can swing something for her to tell us because the Hardy Boys ain't, ain't gonna tell anything. The Hardy Boys ain't gonna tell us anything anymore. At least for You're the back. moment. Good. What can I help you with? Well, nothing about what I need to know. Uh, let's see. Hey, about my missing badge again. I'm afraid I can't say any more until we've taken care of formal protocol. How do I negotiate my way out of this? Let's try it. It's a red check? Well, let's give it a shot. She's an Ooh. appreciator. Just floats a favor at her. Insinuates. Surely there's some other way to demonstrate our law enforcement credentials? I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're hmm. going to want to see something very tangible. You're in. But expect her to drive a hard bargain. Like what? Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Yeah, I have zero authority, which reminds me, by the way, Let's make that authority even less by internalizing um, this self-critique. <laughs> um, not the best situation to be in, that's for sure, but we're there already. Might as well. Or you can recover your badge. Though, if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Yeah, I thought it was in the ledger, and it wasn't. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Excuse us for a moment, madam. Kim, what's up? Kim, I cannot talk to you. What is up? This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. How did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. Oh, so we're henchmen now. Really? I thought it was going so well. We're henchmen now? This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along. Or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. What do you propose? That we don't investigate the drug trafficking? We could just, you know, find my badge. That too. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. <laughs> uh, so true. The situation might have changed drastically by the time you locate it. Time is of the essence. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. What do you propose that we don't investigate the drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. 
but do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done and demand for her information on the lynching. Okay, let's get back to her then. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara to Revachol through the terminal? And you want us to investigate? Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. So you want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everart and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. She raises her bony finger. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. The lorries. Am I going to need bolt cutters for this? The lorries. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they're vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. She gives you a knowing look. Her irises are light green, like the river Esperance in bright daylight upstream where it's clearer i'll be explicit if you find this driver i will share company secrets with you why didn't you come to the rcm earlier it's no coincidence that the lorries are stranded there like that is it what proof do you have that the union is involved we already have some suspicious suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching Okay, I've made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. All right, let's discuss something else. Uh, why, did you, why didn't you come to the RCM earlier? We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. Yeah, this is true. We know the company has launched its own probe into the Union's alleged involvement. We also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well... Here's your chance, officers. Uh, it's no coincidence that lorries are stranded there like that, is it? No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However... She pauses looking to the sea. This is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the Trade Committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. She looks north. Thousands of litres of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. Well, at least this solves one mystery. What is that, Lieutenant? Why I had to call East Motor Track and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. I'd wonder since I first drove in, on my motor carriage. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kitsuragi, but we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. What proof do you have that the Union is involved? How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. So you think the strike is being funded with sourced ingredients for drugs? Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. We already have some suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching. 
The two might even be connected. Or not. Though, if you have evidence to the contrary, I'm eager to hear it. As eager as I am to share it, Lieutenant, once the job is done. Okay, I've made up my mind about the smuggling uh, investigation. Let's go. Yes? We will take this case, probe the driver, see what it yields. Let's see what yields. Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. We found two. Is the third one the old lady? It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. She takes a long sip from her seemingly bottomless thermal cup. I got more questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Let's see... Wow, okay. What times are these? These are... unimportant times, Detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. She puts her finger to her lips, then points at you. Too late for what? For the big time. Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. The smile of a predator. No doubt what she's got in mind. You've got a predatory streak. All men are predators, dear. Nothing much to be done about that. It's all a matter of where you get to file your teeth. What's the big time? The revolution. Huh, and what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real... kerfuffle. Kerfuffle? Would you say it's, it was a bunch of apes duking it out? Who got shot in the head? Who got the mineral rights? When was this kerfuffle? Uh, would you say it was a bunch of apes duking it out? Why, of course. We're talking Duke Out Central. Full swing, intraspecies warfare. <laughs> and the apes? Were they evil? No. I would say the apes were neutral. She looks at you, her gaze sharp. Uh, okay, neutral. Sounds like evil to me. Neutral. On the other hand... She turns north through the bombed-out buildings lying the waterfront, then shivers slightly. Who got shot in the head? Those would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists... They all got shot in the head. Okay. Oh. And the anarchists, too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. Did the communists and the anarchists shoot back? Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. Truly a kerfuffle. Uh, uh, that's a tragedy. Sounds like they should have shot more people in the head then. That's, that's truly a kerfuffle. Yeah, it was a kerfuffle, all right. The lieutenant mumbles from behind his notes. Yes. The Insulindian Deluge, they call it. Anyone else gets shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head. Or thrown beneath a horse. Or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king. Just the king's nephew. She shakes her head. Really, the nephew? The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. Smart king. Cowardly king. I love that king. Fucking communist. Don't care about king, tell me more one thing. Smart king. Yes. King Guillaume had a nose for bad PR. He ran before it. What is the expression? Went down? Anyway, Gil got out alive and his nephew Frisell got shot in his place. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. It was a wild time. Who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. She looks up to the sky, then inland at the crumbling city. Okay, and by the liberals you mean... Liberals are usually middle-class people, detective. 
or the remaining gentry, the beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution, with monarchy, big mistake. Others bet on the revolution. They were called the ultras or ultra liberals. They fared well. How did the liberals win it all? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? Sure. We. She's one of them. Of course. If everyone got shot, who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Wait, you just said the liberals already took everything. The liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The coalition took the ground. The ocean, the laws, and the people. She stomps her rubber-footed... Rubber-booted foot. The coalition of nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sieur Le Clé. The armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. Moralist. The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now. The coalition government. The rulers of Revachol. And also, the world. These guys are strong. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. The color of moralism is blue. The official motto of Moral Intern, or Moralist International, is a blue forget-me-not, a piece of gray sky. Unofficial. For a moment, there was hope. I don't think I'm a moralist, ma'am. Not just technically, practically. For a moment, there was hope. If Always picking the option that doesn't commit to anything, then hell yes I am, and also not. Uh, I don't think I'm a moralist, ma'am. Of course. Not easy to be moderate about head shooting in your line of work. Rooty tooty, pointy <laughs> shooty. Rooty tooty, pointy shooty. That's the way of history. Uh, when was his kerfuckle? The turn of the century revolution. <laughs> don't answer it. It's a trick question. She smiles mischievously. The revolution began in 02, on the Isla of Grad. Though by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. Who started it? It wasn't a who, but a what. A pandemic of Zarat, a particularly virulent prion disease, ah. which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Marzolf came along and overthrew the government. Wow, that kind of sounds like what's happening right now. Hopefully that doesn't mean anything. Uh, what did this Zerath do? It made people overthrow their governments. No way. Indeed. Zerath is a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Where did it spread from there? From Revachol and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revachol commune two years later. It was the end. What came next? Why, you and I, officer. Our lives in the zone of control. She spreads her arms, raincoat flapping in the wind. What is the zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the Coalition of Nations, and you, of course, the citizens' militia. The Zone of Control is the third incarnation of Revachol, after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. What happened in the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of the inter communication. Telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Revachol West, the Aftermath continues for the fifth decade. 51 minus 8 equals 43. Wait, so you're saying it's been like this for 43 years? It's been like this for how long exactly? 43 years? 
Time flies. What have we been doing all this time? The Twenties saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And then after that? The Thirties? Things settled down in the Thirties. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. That's when they discovered disco. Yes, and quantitative easing. It was a market mirage, unfortunately. The 40s dispelled it. An Isola wide hangover, you might say. So, here we are. She curtsies. Welcome to reality, <laughs> baby. Ah, jeez, okay. For her to be where she is, Wild Pines Group must have picked the right side. Which side was Wild Pines Group on? They picked the winning side. That's why they're here, and others are not. They chose wisely. Perhaps it wouldn't have turned out that way had I been in charge. I might have bet on the king and led the pines to doom. You would have sided with the king? I would have sided with the cannons. If you'd seen the calibers of the things, you might have too. Perhaps it's better I was born when I was. She thinks. Ten of the fourteen Indo tribes got it wrong. Feld, Kupri, Tricentennial. So I suppose I would have been in good company. What would you have done differently? Good question. What would you have done differently? I asked you, who are you in all this? I would have sought a medical solution. Sounds like Zerath drove those people mad. I would have killed more, 400 million if that's what it took. I would have positioned myself very precisely. I would have made it out with the mineral rights. I don't know what I would have done differently. I asked you, who are you in all this? And I asked you, past less detective of the citizens militia. What insight has acute encephalopathy given to you? Here's some wisdom, lady. Say the death thing. Uh, I would have sought a medical solution. Sounds like Zerath drove those people mad. I don't know if that would have helped. I don't know what I would have done differently. Then you would have died, most likely. Not far from here. Maybe even right here, during the beachhead. Defending the coast the day the Coalition took the city. The cold runs down your spine. She gestures toward the waters. Probably. Happily. No way. I wouldn't have fought with the Communards. Probably. The wind stops. There is silence on the dark water of the Martinez Inlet. A dog barks. A gunshot echoes off the walls of some distant building. No. Almost certainly. The commune would have forced you. Such was the fate of the undecided. I see. That's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. Anyway, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Not so fast. Who is she in all this? Ask her who she is. She owes you an answer. Let's see. What is... Yeah, let's try number four. I already know what this acute encephalopathy is. Let's try this. It's breathe the corpse. Wait. Unjacketed ammo. What are my stats? What are my stats? Prove your authority to the Hardy Boy's eyes. How am I going to do that? It remains ah, a crap. mystery what you mean by this something close. This isn't about you. It's about reality. I want to know who you are. Hmm. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. What are you? I am the vilest of the vile. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. She says with a sudden flash of teeth. I wasn't, expect that, I wasn't expecting that answer from you, lady. I am an Ultra. 
She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking, revealing the canine. It's sharp. Wait, what's an ultra? Dios mio! Draws across. A liberal! Cool, I liberate pretty hard myself. I don't understand. What's so vile about that? Wait, what's an ultra? An ultra liberal. It's a type of liberal. From the revolution. It's uh, not the moderate kind. I don't understand. What's so vile about that? I really don't know. Haven't you heard? I am a nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp. One of those who pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. She nods pedago pedagogically. Holy crap, the words in this game are so... They're so... Big. And precise. We surrendered the nation to financial colonists. No saint person identifies as an ultra anymore. Not in broad daylight. Tell me, now that I've uncoiled myself, are you repulsed? She looks you in the eye. In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. You're a monster. I forgive you. I forgive you, but only because you're charming. I don't care. I really don't care. A fitting punishment. To be forgotten, if not forgiven. Save a prayer for us in our chateaus on Azon and in Stella Maris. When the dust settled, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. This was all our last generation managed. She turns her gaze to the Delta. Would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery. While a gentle wind sweeps the streets in the rebuilt east, light drizzle washing it clean, lights go up and motor carriages circulate the tracks. I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez, and not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. If not for my own sake. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. She loosens them. Then for my daughters. We had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. You're a smart woman. You're a patriot. You have daughters. You're a smart woman. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. Her earrings chime as she nods. You're no dummy yourself. So am I. No. Or intellectual vanity will be my undoing. Ah, <laughs> uh, so am I. A smart boy getting smarter. One basic term of reality at a time. You're a patriot? Yes. I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Seditious talk, man. <laughs> the lieutenant puts down his notes and gives her a look. You have daughters? Yes. Whatever else I am. I'm also a mother. And a wife. Now, shall we return to reality? She closes her eyes and opens them again. Okay. Uh, impossible. But we got a 92% chance. How is that impossible? What is reach for something fundamental? What is all of this? The scent. The sound. The air. What world is this? What world? The only one, I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. The fading pearls of her eyes look to the sea. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. What do you see? Great bodies of water. Forest-covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. She concludes. There is a term of endearment they coin for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. What is it? Elysium. Disco Elysium, huh? What is this one with the evil apes? Is this the one with the evil apes? Elysium, the world needs a term of endearment. This world does not deserve a term of endearment. Is this the one with the evil apes? 
Not in this case, no. That sounds more like something the Mesk petrofascists might say. Her gaze wanders. The Confederate Republic of Mesk, the world's largest state by territory, has fallen into an especially nihilistic strain of nationalism lately. It isn't enough to call us animals. Even animals aren't animals. What are animals then? They're like you and I, I suppose. Living organisms don't identify with abstractions. Elysium is for particular beings. Well, the, wor the world needs a term of endearment. It does. There are those who would call it hell. What is hell? A term of hatred that originates like many such things with the Mesk Petro fascists. I don't feel like I've got the whole picture yet. I've got a clear picture. Let's proceed with another term. I f don't feel like I got the whole picture yet, honestly. Oh, you want a picture of the world? There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. She raises her finger to her lips. How come? Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. How about it's a ball? Inside, sideways? What shape is this world then? How about it's a ball? That's looking less and less likely, Detective. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids. But the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. ORG, Occident Revishaw Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three, they're piecing together a dark grey corona. A dark grey corona? Yes. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are grey flares and prominences. Even arcs above entire Isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. Wait, is this actually a flat Earth? What? A cold fear seeps into you. Oh my god, wait, what the hell are you telling me? The pale? And what do you mean, Corona? They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet. Or, to speak more plainly, imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. I am sorry, dear. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together, however naive it may sound. A fractured corona doesn't feel like it's going to bring anyone together. Okay, then everything will be okay? Uh, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's going to bring anyone together. You have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... It's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. Well, if you say it's disco, it doesn't sound like any any kind of disco I'd like to go on. Well, if you say it's disco. See? Everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. However wasted its opportunities. The cold seeps into you. The air is heavy with 80% humidity. Woo! That's humid. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there, on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. The lieutenant observes you both, silently. He adjusts his glasses. You said pale. What is pale? The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. Yes. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. We do have a case to attend to. Sorry about that, Kim. You weren't saying anything, and I got caught up. Of course, Lieutenant. Let's try something else. Mm. I want to know what the pale is. I'm really curious what this pale is. I don't think your colleague would appreciate that. He has already been so patient with this whole 
exercise. Let's continue with something else, all right? You can ask about anything else in the world. Anything. Okay, well. This is not going to happen with the lieutenant present, unless you can convince him to step aside. Uh, it's a wide check. Ask for Kim to step away while you discuss the pill. I mean, we I got nothing else to go. I, I got nothing else right now. How else am I supposed to... How else am I supposed to, like, show authority to Hardy, Hardy Boys? I got nothing. There is an investigation. You know what? Let's do that for now. Glad to have been of assistance. We'll come back to this later. It is very interesting to me. I want I want to know where this all goes. Uh, but at the moment, we have a shipping container to investigate. I remember there being a shipping container. Uh, we also have a lorry driver to talk to. We know two lorry drivers. Supposedly there's a third one. But... Let's see, do you know about the third third lorry driver? Still here. Stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? He folds his hand behind his head and leans back. But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? He passes letting the memory dissipate. Uh, do you finance those other addictions with drug trafficking? I need to get high. I'm looking for a dealer. Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and <clears throat> drive it to Jamrock. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Uh, who do you think could be conducting the drug trade, then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. Fair enough. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. Okay, well, I got someone else. Apple Man. He's probably not going to be... Straight with us, though. Looking for something? You're a lorry man, right? What's your stance on drugs? Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. He takes a long drag on his cigarette. Why not? You know where that shit comes from? Sarah Miridza. Safre. Il Mara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage. Racial economic sabotage. Hold on, but they make alcohol. Alcohol in America too. I was told they do. So I take it you're not smuggling drugs out of Martinez. Listen, I agree. It's a responsibility to keep this poison off the streets of Evershaw, right? That's all I need to know. Now let me ask you something else. Uh, all right, that's all I needed to know. Thank you. The man bites his lip and drops the near-finished cigarette lingering between his fingers. Okay, well, the, on the only other lorry driver I think that might be around is this old lady. I don't think she's one, but we need to ask her something. The woman still has... Her eyes fixed on the photograph, in her hands, in the background, the radio plays. Snap the fingers. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Twice. Where am I? Who are you? Pale driver. So she is a lorry driver. Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you jolted her back to reality. I was actually hoping you could tell me that. Are you alright, ma'am? You were out. Me, I'm the law around here. Are you alright, ma'am? You were out. Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. 
What's so bad about the 50s? Where else would you be then? When else would you be then? Where else would you be then? Back in Mexico, during the time of the revolution. Ah. The side walls and cafes are filled with the young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buenguerro. Until you came along, that is. The look she gives you is accusatory. Who is Gabriel Bu uh, Buenguerro? So I take it you were in Mesk when you were young? Sorry to interrupt your daydreaming, ma'am. Ah, who is Gabriel Buenguerro? This is Gabriel Buenguerro. She shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick and his jaw the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. And schoolboys used to memorize all his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. In all likelihood, it's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. So I take it you were in mask when you were young? Someone was. She nods as though her meaning were perfectly clear. Uh, someone, are these not your memories? They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? Okay. Well, she gets gruff suddenly. They are beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know? All of this. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt your dreaming, ma'am. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, Loman. It was early spring, and the man behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. Her eyes narrow, and she appears to take your measure. While you, people, were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution, in Mesk, it was a golden age. The Republic of Mesk is a massive confederation on the Isola of Muindi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a petro-state, a constitutional monarchy, and, as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. Right, I have some other questions for you, police questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos, and knickknacks line the dashboard. What are you hauling? Diamonds. Diamonds, really? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Okay, but what are you really hauling? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you're driving for the cash, so she might have the drugs and she doesn't know about it. She says that as if something narcotic is the real reason. Wait, you get high off driving a lorry? What if the cargo is contraband? I guess that makes sense, minding your own business. What if the cargo is contraband? Then it's contraband, Loman. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like Bad Hand Hermenegildo. Bad Hand Hermenegildos' bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. I mean... Asphyxiation apparently is a kink. Not my thing, though. I still don't really understand this whole Bordero thing. Before I came, you seemed away. You seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. You seem the way. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. So he doesn't think she's a smuggler. You hear that, Loman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Why is that, Lieutenant? Should you drive a lorry if you like... Wait, should you drive a lorry if you get like that? Uh, why is it, Lieutenant? Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. Okay. He doesn't want your frail mind caught up in something here. Something unconnected 
to the case, but connected to this woman tuning out like that. Okay. Let's change the subject. A peldrim is what it is. You seem to like a... Uh, you seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. I wonder if I should. I can't even... I don't know. Should I? Let's go for it. What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. Uh, mm, where could I get my hands on experience like that? If you don't know, <laughs> She flicks her wrist in a gesture of casual dismissal. Maybe if she thought you're corrupt. Evart sent me. Place finger on the side of your nose and tap twice. I wanted to ask if you'd be interested in smuggling some drugs. Uh, she doesn't care what she's hauling. Evart sent me. Well, she only cares about the money, but... Let's try number one. I don't think it's going to do anything. Who the fuck is Evart? The union boss. Ah, and what do I care about the union boss? He's no Gabriel. He's no Franco Negro. He's not even Herman Aguildo the Hunt. Okay, fine. Let's check the uh, change the subject. Good. I don't care about drugs. Little molecules, they are nothing. She glances wistfully at the photo. I don't understand this whole Boydero thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Boydero. You need to listen to on the Western Plain. The Boyadero, Boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magritte, the great steppes of northern Mesk. He is a rugged individualist and explorer. Oh, it's like a vaquero or a cowboy? Okay, what's that? I've already got too many records to listen as it is. Change the topic. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. I'm guessing that doesn't happen. Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the Western Plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring eyes. I think I see where this is going. So she, he gives up his writing and settles down, right? I think I see where this is going. So the boy Adair strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magrit. Then he rides off because the Western Plain is calling to him. Not what I was thinking. I mean, I, I would have expected him to just leave. I didn't expect the other thing. That's not where I thought this was going. You have to understand. A true boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boyadero. Okay, they thank you for now. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesky. Well, uh, we got nothing there. So none of the lorry drivers are sus. At least none of them seem off. I don't know where to go with that, to be honest. Um, I'm guessing the old lady might have been the one to actually haul stuff it's just you know she doesn't really care what she's hauling period can I pick this up okay more bottles oh we got plenty of bottles here can I pick up all the bottles just uh, cleaning up everything here, don't worry about it.
Can we pick this one up? Yes. No, 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 Kim. No, Kim. That's not what I need. Okay, I thought I could only, like, pick up a few. Um... I guess let's check the container. Don't let Leo know. Leo doesn't need to know. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Open the door. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Knock on the door? No reply. The knock produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. Mm. Persuade the door to open. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work, but okay, why not? Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? I mean... Because getting physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? Using my body over wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. Ah, jeez. Okay, well... <laughs> Lieutenant Kitsuragi does not want you to hear about something called the Pale. Probably thinking it will be... It'll prove traumatic. Really? Traumatic? Okay, well, I do have some... Some cutters. Can we You're can we do that? Before the cargo container. No, we cannot. Okay, well <clears throat> we can't open that. Hey Leo, how do we open said cargo container? You might be able to help us with that, right? Are you here, Leo? Oh hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes I did, yes I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. I have some questions for you if that's not too much trouble. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Uh, let's ask about the container. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of container- Told you. Well, uh, I got nothing. I don't need to ask Evard about anything. Uh, I think he only has things about our gun right now. And he doesn't need to know we're searching for it either, or who might have it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm utterly lost. I need to- assert my dominance on the Hardy Boys, but I got no leads. And my next plausible move isn't until 9 p.m.? That is a long way off. That is a long way off. So, I don't know what to do. We can go back to Joyce. Um... Tell her what we found. I don't know if it's going to be enough. You got some thoughts uh, there, Harry? He's got some thoughts. No thoughts. Okay. So we got no business with the scabs right now. Um... Apple man probably is not involved. What to do? What to do? The bookstore is the last place I should probably be going. Just There's nothing there. Wait, are the old guys here? I need to give Renee his uh, picture back. Because I feel guilty about taking it in the first place. I shouldn't have. Oh, there they are. Renee, I'm sorry. Let me... Please don't get mad. Please don't get mad. We are still waiting for a replacement for the bull you sent sinking. Uh, Renee, I found your guard booth. Yes. 
The Debardios Union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. He looks down. Uh, yeah, let me give this to you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. You must have seen something on your night of the night of the murder. Your booth looks into the yard. I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Uh, hold on. Why were you on leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, seek it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <sighs> it's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. The outburst makes him clutch his chest. So who was working on your shift that night? No one. The bus has been unmanned since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. He looks suddenly very old and tired. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... He announced before hesitantly continuing. Look, officers. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. He tries to argue. Evrard created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Evar gets it, big guys looking after the small and everyone working together, I love it. Such dependency only weakens a man further, do or die, there's no middle ground. Rene is by one man, we need a program. Get all the elderly back in the job market, keep folks motivated. Rene should rent out his services, invest the profits, get a few more guys, expand, repeat. Wage work is a dead end. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, tear collecting. It's my side thing too. Probably hold bag, hold out the tear the tear bag. Uh, I mean, nothing wrong with it, but should rent out his services. I don't know. Eh, he should probably rent out his services. I don't, I don't know if this good or bad. Let's go with it. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard booth now? The car carabineer utters angrily. Okay, I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? She is nobody. Ooh. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. His features stiffen and he gets a cold look. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Gaston speaks with a soft voice. Uh, voice. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right in. Okay, well, that's done. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Did you ever use artillery fire against the communards? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds, squeezing a bull in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Why shell them here in Martinez? They should have chosen a place far away from people and buildings. I understand. I'd bomb this place too. This place is a damn beachhead, son. They didn't do it because they didn't like it. They had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. 
Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. He points to the northeast. Deathblow sounds grim. Uh, nods thoughtfully and turns to look to the northeast. Shake your head and look down at the crater. Sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. He says, looking down at the soil. Blood ground. You got old Rene going there. Like he isn't <laughs> hangry enough already. Sorry about that, Gaston. My bad. Uh, that explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There is a strange gleam in his eye. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. A dark shadow runs across his face. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? He stops mid-sentence and turns to you. Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard-working class to take over. Foreign powers cleaned up RMS and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. This coalition seems like, uh, quite capable, actually. Commies just don't understand how money works. Nothing, I don't think. I just do. I don't want to get on his bad side. Nothing, I don't think. I'm just so damn sorry it had to be the coalition. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains... He isn't really paying attention to your words anymore. I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Friselle had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. He sighs. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Uh, well, we're worrying about Frizzle and we're worrying about Guillaume, so what exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> they forgotten already. He then slowly nods and says to himself, It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. <laughs> when we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Let's see, through the bull into the sea. No Renee's job situation. Okay, well. Thank you for your time. So I, uh, we got two points now. I don't know what I'm going to be using the points on. Kind of want to put another slot here, but at the same time, I don't really don't want to do white morning just yet. So we'll just see what happens with our thoughts. Okay, let's report back to Joyce. Uh, let her know what we found out. Honestly, I don't know where to go from here. The only other thing I can think of is increase my authority, try to try to like get through these guys, but you're back. Good. What can I help you with? I spoke with the lower men at the roundabout. On the contrary, officer. There are yet camioners you have not talked to. And don't look so surprised. In a time like this, it would be strange if Wild Pines didn't have eyes on the harbor. But there were three. They must have someone in an overlook position, near the gates. I suggest you go back and canvas for more suspects. Were there people that I missed? 
Maybe the guy selling stuff has is also a lorry man. But there's only supposed to be three. Well, uh, the guy selling stuff possibly might have something. It's worth a shot. He might actually be a lorry man. And we just don't know about it. Everything still cool here, officer. Okay, nothing here. Are we missing someone? Maybe we'll talk to the scab. Maybe they know something. Because at this at this point, I really don't have anything else. Wait, wait. While we're here, let's see if um if there's anyone by this shop. Nope, there's no one. Okay, well, I'm at a loss. I am at a loss. Let's try this guy. Right to work. Right. Nope. Well, I don't think these people over here are going to be able to help us. descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You what? have really let yourself go. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. I do not disagree. He looks towards the coast, defiantly. You pick up on something artificial in his tone, like he's putting on an act. This is unlike him. He is usually more himself. But you're all part of the Union. The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the Union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simmons. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. There's more to it. What have you got against them? <laughs> uh, fine. <laughs> they have recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics peddler. It's shameful. You know, that's kind of funny sound he just made at the beginning there? I didn't think I'd hear it from him. Who do you mean? <laughs> Find out for yourself, endomorphic blob. Interesting. I mean... The only suspect I have is in the room next to me or Elizabeth let's let's give Elizabeth a try again I've got nothing to say to you why are you wasting your time Okay, let's try Hardy, and then we'll go Look, upstairs. The insane police officer is back. Okay. The small man mimes, blowing his brains out. You see his rat face contorted in mock despair, his fingers touching his temple. There's laughter in the room. Try not to kill yourself this time. Why did I listen to authority that time? Uh, establish authority, but we can't really establish authority just yet. I mean, I can put like two points in authority, but I don't think that's going to help us. That's the thing. 
guard. Any, 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 uh, let's see. Can I help you? Nope. None of you can help me. Does this guy know anything? Yep, nothing. I wonder if our neighbor lady might have something to do with it. The door is closed. Try the handle. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Knock. Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. You should punch a fucking hole in it. The murmur in your ears recede. <sighs> nothing. Yeah, I'm kind of lost. There is a woman that is involved here. I don't know who. Oh, wait. She's... How do I get there? I see her. How do I get to the roof guard? Wait, I think I might know. There might be a way through here. I know the blue door probably leads to up there. Just how do we open the blue door though? That's the question. I got nothing. Okay. Nope, nope, no, no, no. Wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. This way, this way. I can't open it. Well, she got there. Maybe there's a, there's a way from um from her room. Hmm. Kim is not going to like it, but let's see if Kuno has anything to say. Probably not, but let's see. Necromancer pig? That shit was dark. Going in there like that. Oh, brutal shit. Tell me. He says, eyes full of admiration. Kuno dies. You're going to pick one out of his brain like that too? Kuno's going to go out in a hail of bullets. Going to look like a fucking porcupine. I want to discuss the body with you again, Kuno. About the crime scene, you kids often play in this yard. Kuno, f uh, I found your shack. He saw you find the bullet. Uh, you have kids often play in this yard? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Dead man's clothes were in the trash container. The ladder. Ever climb it? Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! So you would say the ladder is unclimbable. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! What's in the greenhouse over there? Questions for later. Questions for later. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Eh, I found your shack, Kuno. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack? It was closed for 5,000 <laughs> years? How the fuck did you get in? My face shifted through the roofing material! Shit. Get the fuck out of here! You can't do that! Okay, fine. You can't do that, Kuno! He's trying to fuck at you again! Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. He says to himself, then he turns to you. How did you like it in there, <laughs> pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Eh, uh, what was it with Pig Head? Oh, that! Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Uh, let's see, demo tape, like some sort of musician. Cool pig, I liked it. I got one too. Points to your head. It's shit. <laughs> Forget it, I'm not saying those things. 
too brutal for you, huh? Kuno, fuck your tongue off. Yes, I think you're going. I'm going insane, Kuno. Nah, I just want to get back to the shack. Of course you want back in there. Everyone wants back in there. I found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Okay. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. I've heard enough. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Okay, Kuno well... Kuno doesn't fucking care. Nothing useful here, as expected. Um... Yeah, how do I get to your room, lady? I need to talk to you. And you don't seem to be coming down anytime soon. The thing is, my authority is way too low to deal with uh, Hardy. You see a heavy steel door. Okay. Kim, you may not like this, but I'm going to bust that door down. The door is closed. Still, the lieutenant, you should punch a fucking hole in it. Punch the door. You slam your fist into the vinyl. It does not produce a hole. The door sits sturdily in the frame, and your fist hurts. This was all a very good, normal thing to do. Stop that. The lieutenant sounds angry. I'm sorry, Kim. I'm trying to get to the roof. I don't know how else to get up there. Kim, my methods may be unconventional, but... Let's... I guess let's talk to Joyce again. Oh wait, no. There is one more person. There is one more person that we might be able to talk to. La Manana. Probably has nothing to do with it. Uh, let's just check the shop really quick. Make sure no one else is in here. And also probably... Just dump this all in? The tear machine step. Your bottles clunk into the machine. 160. Not bad. <clears throat> but there's only gonna be enough for one night. That's one night. It's not gonna be good. Okay, Lemania, I need to talk to you. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Nothing. Crap. Well. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We gotta, we gotta head back. So there's no one here to talk to. Joy seems to think there's someone else here I need to talk to. I talk to all of them. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. Let's check this. This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a fumes of heavy fuel oil waft over you. Oh wait. Making your eyes sting. I guess I didn't the odor do this. Mixes with cigarette residue. It's another one of those things where I lost my save, right? Yeah. The driver has a daunt a large metal pendant. Okay. Hangs We're just gonna skip all this. Mirror. The back end of racist nationalist paraphernalia. Tough guy? Not likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. He was acting tough before. This probably scared him a bit. Who knows where it will come in handy? A slightly scared racist. Okay, let's uh, let's talk to him again. I got nothing else here. Looking for something? What are you hauling? Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike. Apples. Apples. Apple it's exactly the kind of thing you'd say. If apples. You some... Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? Drugs. Drugs? They're sh you know where that's it. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight. So they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. 
So I take it's it you're in sabotage. Rachel economic sabotage. So I take it you're not smuggling drugs out of Martinez. Not in, not out. I'll never betray the purity of my tribe. So you're telling us that you don't know anything about drug smuggling through Terminal B? I don't know shit. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. That doesn't actually help your case. Then what are you still doing hanging around here for? Most other uh, camioners have left. What do you think? I can't leave the Lorient unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's those little kids sneaking around at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of a big lorry nearby. I did see one lorry in the trailer doors. With the trailer doors open on my way here, do you know anything about what happened? Yeah, I knew that guy. He was an honest driver who loved this country. Uh, we were having a good debate about genetics at the Wheeling in Rags when some kip boys smashed his lock and took damn near everything. Lost his fucking job over it. Since he left, I haven't had anyone to talk to. He takes a long suck on his cigarette, appearing to savor the taste. Bad for him, I guess. It's a fucking travesty, is what it is. The man shakes his head, dismayed, furiously pulling on his cigarette. If it's not you, then who's running drugs through Terminal B? Isn't it obvious? Fucking ceiling. Mm. That beady eyed South Samaran. <laughs> his little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. That's my thought, to be honest. The one reselling humanitarian aid packages, right? I knew there was something off about that guy. Wait, the street vendor south of here? That guy's a lorry driver? Of course he's a lorry driver. What? <laughs> he tell you he's just some simple businessman or some shit? He's selling his employer stuff after he broke the seals on his Humanox lorry. Okay, that's... That's what I wanted to know, thank you. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. He's your man, alright? 100%. I don't doubt it. You Three people seem clean. Didn't realize it was the fourth one. He nods in a sagely manner, then another puff of cigarette. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Si Leng himself has to say. Guess we need to pay Si Leng a visit. Guess so. Alright, well... Uh, we are kind of low on authority. How how much more? How much more until it's done? 39 minutes, one hour. Jeez. Am I going to be able to... Display some authority over this guy? We're pretty bad on authority. Wait, speaking of authority... Do I have anything? Uh, no minus to authority at least. But does anything increase it? That's the question. No. Nothing increases my authority. Well then. Alright, Sealing. It's time. Everything's still cool here, officer. So, Sealing, what's your stance on drugs? <laughs> drugs? I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. For a moment, he's unsure how to respond. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah. Tasty, tasty drugs. I'm super into drugs. Actually, I don't like drugs. We're looking for a lorry driver who is transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. I'm super into drugs. Actually, I don't like drugs. Eh, uh, you know what? Let's try to trap him. I'm super into drugs. That's very cool. A lot of the coolest detectives do drugs. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale. Or at my home, or on my person. He smiles. Sir, <laughs> it appears to be true. No drugs in sight. Not in the box of sunglasses or under the speakers. We're looking for a lorry driver who is transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler! You investigating that and all. But, uh, I am not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. Uh... A blatant lie, sire. Yet, he tells it with such conviction. We'd believe him if we didn't know better. But you are a lorry driver. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? <laughs> 
it's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. My gosh, how do you actually deal with these kinds of people? So you admit you're a lorry driver? No, I just said I work harder and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think. Realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This <laughs> is my dream. He spreads his arms. So you forgot to tell me. So you were embarrassed to tell me? Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? See, Lang, my source says tell me you're the one transporting the drugs for the Union. So you forgot to tell me. Exactly. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Okay. See, Lang, my sources tell me you're the one transporting the drugs for the Union. Let's just be straight. No! That's insane! It's the fat hater! He's been eyeing me for a week and he sent you here. Maybe he's the one, huh? Have you thought about that? Yeah, he's a little too proud for that and you are deflecting everything. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. It wasn't some drug crowd. You know who they are. Tell me now. You're wasting my time. Tell me who the fuck is transporting the drugs here. Okay, if you don't know, then I'll tell your employer you've been selling his stuff. Hmm. You, kn you know, let's hit him where it hurts. If you don't know, then I'll tell your employer you've been selling his stuff. No use. He's not telling us. He's too afraid. We need to take him to my station and ask him there. After we've called his boss. Okay, look. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. If you don't want to get into this mess, raise your voice, you have to give us a reason to move on. We're buddy ceiling. Help us out. No one will know it was you. Well, I haven't bought anything from him yet, so... We're not exactly buddies. Yet. You have to give us a reason to move on. It's a she, okay? The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. Are you talking about the woman on the side there? Interesting. Could this driver be connected to the Hardy Boys? Who are the driver? Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? He points to the north. All of them! Even the ones who've left! I don't hang out with them! I don't remember who has tattoos! Is the lady driver the old woman back there? Uh, points to the pale driver. Dazed out strange? I don't know. Maybe. If she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. He's not ruling her out. Hmm. Could she be associated with the Hardy Boys? I don't know. I'm not local. I don't know anything about that. Okay, well. Finally got somewhere, but okay, we're cool for now. All right. I scored. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective. Both of you. You deserve it. Persuade him to give you some money. Ah... Ratted out the lady driver, humanitarian aid macaronis. You know, if you want me to keep quiet. Ceiling. A little money, please. I need it for tomorrow night. Start with a little compliment. 
Then work your way up from there. <laughs> this is about business, remember. Hey, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. But why, officer? After all this mess, the broken seals, lying to you, <laughs> come on. Think of it as an investment. <laughs> an investment? What kind of investment? It's an investment in me, a highly experimental human being. My risk reward ratio is insane. It actually is insane. Invest into me not telling your employer about your operation here. I'm a policeman. It's an investment in the good relations uh, relations with RCM. Uh, it's an investment in your customer base. Got to prime the pump, man. Invest in me not telling an employer about your operation here. That's probably the most convincing. Ha! That! You drive a hard bargain, officer. I respect that. Okay. What's it going to cost me? Be reasonable. One million real. No, it's not going. Uh, he's not going to give us a million real. Ten real. Sounds like a fair deal all around. He takes a ten note from the leather pouch. Corruption. Sorry. It's just like bus or seagull. A kid watching out of a window describing things going by. He doesn't like it too much, but what do you do? Okay. Corrupt cop. Good cop, bad cop. 12. Honor, people killed. Find out who's... Okay, well, let's talk to the lady. We talked to her earlier. She didn't give us much of anything. She just kind of wanted to shoot us off earlier. At least we're a little bit closer to uh, two days, two nights at the hotel now. I mean, we could also use this to buy stuff from him, it's essentially giving his money back, so... Yeah... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay, where is she? He's back here. Okay, we'll talk to you again. The woman is still hunched over the railing. Okay, uh, snap snap. Swaying. Huh? What is it? What do you want? Okay, are you the lo the lady driver? Did you just call me a lady, Harry Fair? Well, aren't you a lady? I was told of a woman driver. You're the only woman here. Aren't you a lady? The woman's malevolent cackling fills the roundabout. Oh no, she's a witch. I'm a lady like you are Gabriel Buenguerro. Only in dreams. So you're not the driver everyone's so terrified of. I'm only terrifying to small children <laughs> and to those who used to know me. Yeah, it's not her. Believe me. Uh, then who is the female driver I was told of? Why are you so scary to the people who used to know you? Because they can no longer recognize the person I once was. Then who is the female driver? How should I know? Do I look like I spend a lot of time with the other camioners sniffing around when I have my movies to go to? Fair enough. Oh, Sim. The woman stares at you, her mind elsewhere now, on other matters. Okay, so it's not her. I guess we're gonna have to talk to the other lorry drivers now. We're just gonna- we're just basically going back and forth. But we don't have any other leads. We- we need this to- to move forward, I feel like. for something I know you've been giving me the runaround fess up where where's the lady driver I don't know what you're talking about first you knew see Ling didn't do it then why are you smirking just tell me which one's her lorry first you knew see first you knew see Ling didn't do it he did something he stole his employer's goods and another lorry man's job he should be thankful for the tip okay he grins with a wild smile uh, then why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Revachal West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. So who does you? Who does the lady driver? Actually, we do. Who does you? No. He means la puta madre. La puta madre. 
A legendary, and not in a good way, crime boss from Jamrock controls what is probably the most powerful organized crime outfit ah. in Revishol West. <laughs> yeah, him. Cross your arms and nod, okay. <laughs> what are you doing, Kim? Let me handle it. Okay. Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. He says unsure where this is leading. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. He gets closer to him. The lieutenant adopts a rodentine quality. Be cool, sire. He's getting into this. Wait, are we? <laughs> Say nothing. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin his vibe. You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We are not peonies. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peonies job to find out who that is. He's surprisingly good at this. Mm. Not bad at all. Look at him lurching. <laughs> it's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. <laughs> I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Loriman and Carter's guild. His eyes dart between you and the lieutenant. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? The lieutenant points to the yard. Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. Be careful. <laughs> this man still got some fight in him by the looks of it. It won't be easy to break him. Kim's bluff. Do I have a half light? I think I have half light already. Let's try it. The main oh. thing is to not overdo it. Even when you're trying to scare someone, the most important thing is how does it look on your resume? Ah, uh, why don't you and me step outside for a little talk? What? What do you think we're doing right now, runt? We're outside talking. Damn it, I meant I want you to find some place private. Mm, crap, we, we screwed up. Is some kind of homo thing? No, no, of course not. Just tell me what you know. Crap. Make me runt. He blows a cloud of smoke right in front of your face. We we'll just have to ask someone else about the lady driver. Let's go. Uh, I want to break this guy. That was 72%! How did I... My half-light was... good. Do I put extra points on the half-light? Okay, well... <sighs> My man, you are my only other hope. Please tell me what you know. Still here. Stuck <laughs> in this damn jam, my man. What's up? I heard that one of the drivers is a woman, but I don't think she's here. Do you know who this lady driver is? I don't want to talk about that. Please, tell me. He shifts around, suddenly uncomfortable, looks away. Why? Do you know something? What is it? I don't mean to pry, but I need your help. She may be involved in this drug business. Do you know something? Man, I was hoping it isn't going to be her. All I can say is, she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker. And I don't know where she is. I asked you who's conducting a drug trade. You said you didn't know. Now you're saying you do. Who is this person? What's her name? Who is she to you? What does she look like? Why, when did she leave? Okay. You said you didn't know. Now you're saying you do. What is it, man? I didn't, man. I told you I was hoping it's not her, that she wouldn't be mixed up in it. It's true. We would have caught a lie, but a kind heart is tricky. Bah. 
emotional rhetoric. He knew something and he didn't share it with you. That's a fact. Who is this person? What's your name? Thank God I don't know. People here call her the Lady Driver. She kept her name a secret. From me too. Now I see why. Who is she to you? A friend? An acquaintance. I don't know. She was the only person in this damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to rat out to the law, okay? What does she look like? A youngish woman. Gruff, but in a cool way. I know her! She's in room three! What could our hair? Blue and violet. Dyed. It was violet when she got here. Blue before she went. I don't think that's her hair color now. Then she may have dyed it again. When did she leave? Damn, I don't want to... Please just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person. I know that much. And we have an investigation to do. So please help us, man. You are the only one I can talk to about this. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. The girl's troubled. If you hunt her down, she may not survive it. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. Believe us, it really is. You said she's troubled, how? Believe us, please. I just can't, man. I'm not naive. I get that, but... <sighs> Fine. She's troubled how, dude? How? She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over. And you're looking for a way out. She shared this with you? Yes. Which is why I don't want to snitch on her. It's not just... It's not snitching. It's just a few questions. Come on, man. Life is just a joke. I was told everyone's afraid of her. You're not? I heard the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me, too. That she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her. More like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well... It looks like it did now, but we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. Hold on, her mind? When she left, did she leave her lorry behind? Uh, hold on, her mind? The way it worked. The trouble it was giving her. She left her lorry behind, too. Fuck, man. Go grill someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. He's right. There are other options. The race man, for one. Yeah, I suppose. Wait, this guy says they're friends. Then, acquaintances. And he's okay with others ratting her out. Now is not the time to focus on feelings. You need that info, son. So you're alright with others ratting her out? You just don't... You just don't want your hands dirty? Put yourself in my shoes. I need this for another investigation too. It's important, I can't blow it. Nope. She's a suspect, I need you to tell her where she is, or I can't finish the investigation. Fine, I will drop the matter for now. No, uh, so you just don't want your hands dirty. Fine. I don't want to be a butcher. And I don't want to be a knight either. I just want to be a person who can sleep at night. A little fame wouldn't hurt too. Put yourself in my shoes. I need this for another investigation. It's important, I can't blow it. You're not going to put a bullet in your head if you blow it, are you? Because she's on the edge, man. She's a suspect, I, and I need you to tell me where she is, or I can't finish the investigation. I... I thought you were a different kind of cop. Something breaks in him as he stares in your eyes. Where is the lady driver? Here. He takes the key ring from his pocket, then looks at it before giving it to you, in silence. The keys to a motor lorry. Pretty complex. Looks like a chain lock. The lorry's still here. Down past the statue of Philippe. The cabin is green. You can get in there with these. That's all I know. When did she leave? Last Friday. Anything else? Like where she is now? Uh, and why did you have the keys? That's a good question. Do you... Anything else? No. I don't know. Uh, why did you have the keys? She left them to me. Because she trusted me. So I can get it out of the way when the jam breaks loose. Otherwise... He doesn't finish the sentence. Okay. The other drivers would have to tow it, or break in, to get the machines moving. If they break in, they would find what's hidden inside. 
something incriminating? I'm sorry I had to do this. I bet you are. One more thing about something else. Nah. I need to think my own thoughts now. Pray forgiveness for my sins. Go check your cabin. I hope it gets you something. Help someone. Sorry I had to do that to you, Tommy. Sorry about that. Guillaume Le Million. Bad news. Guillaume Le Million did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Xinyao province in Safre, where he died of auto-erotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single, Wonderland, skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s, and also as a warning. That explains the imagery above. Okay. Plus one pl uh, pain threshold blood oxygen is boring. All psyche learning caps raised by one. Good, that's going to help a little bit. Minus one authority, though. So the authority debuff is permanent? Oh, that doesn't help me. That doesn't help me at all. Plus one pain threshold. My volition is utter crap. Oh boy, why is it utter crap? My authority is even worse. And it takes a point to remove it? Well, okay. Green. This one, right? This green foul, A to Z, Contempora, is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. This is the one our men pointed to. Try to peek in the window. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of a seat and two steering levers. Unlock the door with a key. You push the key into the lock and turn. It makes a cracking sound. Then the door pops back a few centimeters. You can just... The smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. There's something odd about the passenger seat. The seating fabric has been pulled tight over the lower side of the seat where the toolbox should be. Admire the posters. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. One of them particularly catches your eye. A centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. There's definitely perfume in the air. It's spicy, with a hint of amberette, wafting through the bitter air of the cabin. What's that smell? The remnants of a sweet juniper-scented perfume. Probably Grenade Number 5. Study the centerfold. The actress is draped in a sheath dress, one of her shoulders bared. The faded remains of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. Wait, doesn't she resemble someone you know? But you can't put your finger on whom exactly. It's probably number three. This is Tip Tijon, a starlet from the dawn of cinematography, less known for her talent than her tragic, untimely death. What happened to her? She wasted away in a drug den called The Door to the River, not far from here on Boogie Street. A mixture of cocaine and morphine. She was afraid of the world and the camera, too. Okay, enough of the posters. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. A radio transmitter is attached to the dashboard and a toolbox sits under the driver's seat. Examine the radio. Looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed. 
Likely by the missing lady driver. Strange. There are so many radio stations saved here. Must be over 100 at least. The lieutenant leans closer to the radio and hums. It has to be an advanced model to fit so many frequencies next to each other without blending them together. Why would anyone need so many radio stations? Is there anything we can do with a radio? Why so many radio stations? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. He flicks a switch on the radio. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite a range, too. A 20 kilometer radius at least. Perhaps extended by an attachable antenna that's not here right now. Is there anything we can do with the radio? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. What else is here? The ghostly actresses and the rusty toolbox under the driver's seat and the oddly bulging seat cover. Check the pedals. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Sandpaper adds extra grip. Wait. There was a odd shoe. Is she the one? It looks like the driver has glued a piece of sandpaper to her throttle to offer some extra grip. Sandpaper? A novel technique? The sandpaper would also rub off the pattern from the right... The driver's right boot sole. Yes. He likes where this is going. One of the footprints at the crime scene had an aberration. One sole was smoother than the other. Which means that the missing lady driver was present at the lynching. The lieutenant's eyes light up behind his prescription lens. Wait, the a missing 8th Hardy? Here? And she's also the one running the drug trade. What a handful. First the drug smuggling, now this. How deep did this rabbit hole go? Women. Shakes your head. Always up to something. <laughs> uh, the missing 8th Hardy. Here. Looks like her, yes. What a handful. Now we know for certain who is the missing 8th person at the lynching. Do you think that Hardy and his boys could also be involved in the drug operation? Those jerks? Definitely. I think the entire union's involved. Maybe even all of Martinez looks around suspiciously. Not necessarily. The lady driver could have kept the drug trade a secret. This would fit with what Joyce told us, but I don't want to make any assumptions. I really don't want to make uh, any assumptions right now. Understood. We should still go and see what Titus has got to say on the matter. Are we finished with the lorry? Not yet. The movie stars are still smiling from the walls. The radio transmitter sits on the center console and a faint smell of perfume is in the air. Peel off the cover on the passenger seat. Voila, a stack of neatly folded papers has been stashed behind the seating fabric. You see three maps depicting a large metropolitan area. It's Revachon. Some of its routes and highways have been outlined with a pen. Bonne prise. The lieutenant commends you as you shift through the treasure, well worn and folded into neat squares. Fold open the mo topmost map. This large map displays the elevated motorway called 881. The intake leading to Martinez is marked with a blue X. There's another X on the off-ramp at a place called the Old South. Toll booths at the intakes are marked with a circle. It looks like there are scant few ways of getting onto the elevated motorway that runs over Jamrock. And this person knows them all. There. Hundreds of thousands of motor carriages roar on the 881, high above the mess of brown and red roofs that is Jamrock. The commuters don't even look down. The world ceases to exist outside the windshield. Where does the road lead? To Kuron, through the middle-income neighborhoods there, by the river, and then to Stella Maris and La Delta for work, while the men and women of Jamrock scuttle to their fates below the road. Hold open the second map. This municipal map from the 30s displays a complex system of storm sewers underneath a sub-district called the Pox. Old military hospital, 
right adjacent to the 41st precinct. Wind, wind rips through the empty hallways of the once great military hospital. Now, just a ruin under an overgrown park. Beneath the hospital, great sewer tunnels hum and vibrate with life of their own. What is that sound? The rattle of motor carriages and lorries driving through long forgotten tunnels, lit by gaslights. Look at the third map. The final map displays a labyrinth of service tunnels left over from the construction of Motorway 881. A few routes have been marked with a pen, where the tunnels and sewers surface near the eminent domain and a traffic island in central Jamrock by the lake. These service tunnels were probably used during the construction of the foundation beneath the motorway. Looks like the smugglers have infiltrated the road network belonging to East Motor Tract. The smugglers have infiltrated the motor tract. So it would seem. The lieutenant examines the maps with a furrowed brow. The RCM patrols most of these auxiliary roads, though apparently not all of them. Where does the contraband end up? Hard to say. This distribution network looks certainly large, yet still vague enough. It doesn't reveal much about the Besmerti behind it. Besmerti? That sounds vaguely familiar. The Besmerti is a Revacholian crime syndicate. They see themselves as the inheritors of the 14 Revacholian in the tribes. But really, they're just violent gangs vying for control on the west side of Revachol. With cool names like La Puta Madre mm. and Aura Masta. It's a dark parody. Who do you think is behind this? It's definitely not the Union. They just do some logistics. This operation has spread everywhere in Jamrock. If it's that widespread, then Madre remains the most likely suspect. Here's bad news. There have been attempts at a serious investigation before, but they haven't ended well for those involved. Oof. The lieutenant removes his glasses and polishes them with a handkerchief. Especially bad news <clears throat> for cops who may have something in their past they don't even know is there. Yeah, probably me. Return the stack of papers under the seat. Best not to disturb the scene. I'll have forensics go over the lorry and pick this up later. The stack of maps looks just like before, barely noticeable. The movie stars look silently by, and the pull-out toolbox has a rubber handle, worn from years of use. Pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. Unfold the newspaper. It's an issue of Petit Ferric from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. Pick up the note. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. These formulas look oddly painful. Maybe it's the hangover, but they give you a headache. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... The lieutenant leans over your shoulder to examine the note. Push the it in. The two slice back into its nest. The rest is as it was. Posters, a radio, dust on the windows. I... You close the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? Before we return to Joyce? Wow. That was a find. I wasn't sure where I was going to go anyway. And I, this was the next best thing. And holy crap, we got somewhere. But first, my thoughts. Rigorous self-critique. Here it is. Hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. TMI. You held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will. That's right. These are not flights of fancy. These are real deeds, Harry, emerging from the darkness of your past. You tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot, but hit him in the pelvis, crippling him for life. And above all, you let life defeat you. All the gifts your parents gave you, all the love and patience of your friends, you drowned in a neurotoxin. You let misery win. And it will keep on winning till you die or overcome it. Accept. 
Okay, our past is very bad. Uh, looks like we got our authority back somehow. Bonuses from the thought. Int and Psy red check failures plus heal plus one morale. Really? That's kind of weird. Fizz and Mott uh, red checks. Failures heal plus one health. Learning cap from pain threshold raised to six. This is a really good one to have. White Morning. And also we lost the the author the minus one authority. I kind of want to internalize uh, White Morning, but I'm probably not going to do that until we go to sleep. At least five hours will go, will make it like what do you call this easier to deal with. Oh yeah, Kim, what do you want to know? All right, we finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found, so we don't do it in front of the company rep. Seems like something police would do. What do you think of this, Kim? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade casts a wide net. This means it's well-funded. Technology like that, a major player must be financing it. I'm not sure what the ULAN frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed, or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. Listening in on your calls, between you and your station, a worrying prospect. Oh, and the maps we found. They reveal the geographical extent of the operation. Looks like they've used abandoned tunnels and access roads to stay hidden. This is useful info. And last but not least, it looks like the Hardy Boys knew this driver, as we know that she was present at the lynching. This may be the Union connection we've been searching for. The probe and the case converged, he thinks. This was quite the find. It really is. It really, really is. So what about the movie posters? How do they factor into all this? So it turns out the Union is connected to the Union. Uh, <laughs> it turns out this is connected to Union. Will the RCM open an investigation into this? Uh, so it, it is connected to the Union somehow. Like Joyce told us, yes, logistically. But don't expect to bust this open during our stay here. At best, this is an angle we can use against them to other ends as extra ammunition. What about the movie posters? How do they factor into all this? As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. I don't know why I got hung up on that. Don't be fooled. Desire always plays a role. A lot of women there, especially for a lady driver's cabin. Maybe the traitor is some sort of a cinephile. Could the film industry be involved? A lot of women there, especially for a lady driver's cabin. Yes, well... Okay, well, it doesn't matter, I guess. Will the RCM open an investigation? We should return to the murder case. See what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation, sometime later when we are done here. We do not want to get caught in that. He stops to think. What are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, I mean. Especially if the Madre grouping is involved and I can't imagine they aren't. It's certainly worrisome. Corruption? All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. Okay, debrief over? Debrief over. After you. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to end that here for today. Let's uh, save really quick and then we'll review. Let's review. Wow! I wasn't expecting to see this uh, converge. I mean, maybe in the back of my mind, the no, 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 no. I mean, here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. We know there was an eighth Hardy boy, right? And that one of them has to be a lorry driver. And the drug trade and the lorry driver here, I guess it makes sense. And Measurehead even mentioned they were charmed by this lady. I don't know who this lady is. I still think it's the lady in room number three. 
And she didn't really leave. She just hid in the in the inn because she can't go anywhere. I mean, think about it. The bridge has been closed for quite a while, it seemed. And then when Kim came in, he had to beg them to... He, had, he basically had to beg them to, like, um, make it go down so he could get in. It could be her. She looks, she, she has the body, but I don't remember what her description was. I know her hair is not the color that, um, that we were told, so it could have been dyed again. I, I, we did see her on top of the inn. We just couldn't get to her. I don't know how we're going to get there. We'll figure that out at some point. But huge breakthrough as far as this case is concerned, uh, despite my <laughs> random uh, actions today. I am quite pleased. I am quite pleased. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Have a nice rest of your day. And bye-bye.